the theme of the month as declared by God's servant to us we are running with is I will restore health unto the Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 and I will heal you of your wound I will restore health unto thee that's an assurance of God from God to us and our teaching series on Sundays is understanding the healing wonders in redemption understanding the healing wonders in redemption why are we talking about redemption because he paid for our healing by his stripes on the cross so when you are redeemed everything he paid for becomes your right hello he paid for our healing by his what stripes and see that account in Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 1 to verse 6 all together. Who had believed our reports and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He, was dis he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteem him not can we read verse 4 and verse 5 together one to go surely he had bore our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted and verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed amen somebody so we see from this scripture even if you read to verse 6 that everything that pertains to our well-being has been paid for everything that pertains to our well-being has been paid for sir if you lack anything it is because you are either ignorant or afraid to take what belongs to you it has been paid for by redemption so when you surrender your life to Christ you appropriate those blessings that has been done for us on the cross that is why if you are not saved what you'll be getting is crumbs. But the good news is that crumbs still heals anyway. Amen, somebody. That is, if crumbs follow, if it doesn't fall, you will still be sick. Praise the Lord. Because we saw that in Matthew chapter 15 last week. It is the crumbs that dogs eat. May the children not be hungry children. Crumbs will not fall. So you will not have. That's why it's better to be saved and become a son. Then healing becomes your right. Anyone other than the son of my voice, you are returning home here. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Today we will zero in on the healing wonders in the world. The healing wonders in the world. We have talked about healing wonders in faith. The healing wonders in kingdom advancement endeavors. Today we want to look at the word of God. They want to look at the word of God. The instrument of a healing by the word, which is the word of God, place. The healing instrument, which is the word. That's what we're looking at. Praise God. God's word is the balm in Gilead. Go to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22, like the choir sang. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is the hair of my people not restored? God is even surprised that you come to church and you are not healed. God is surprised that there is, a, there is an instrument of healing which is in Zion and you see come, that instrument was administered and you are not healed. God says, I am surprised. Why am I by the head of my daughter not recovered? Somebody say, God surprised? Yes. Because as far as he is concerned, everything about your healing has been made provision for so why are you not having it 
the healing wonders in the world. What are we saying here? Please take note. This is very important. Even though faith is required for all healing or everything in the kingdom, the word of God, hear this, is the principal instrument for healing. The word of God is the principal instrument for your healing. The word. The word. The word of God. Psalms chapter 107 and verse 20. Psalm 107, 107 and verse 20. He said, he sent his word. And his word did what? Heal them. Hmm. And deliver them from their destruction. He didn't go there. He only sent his word. The word of God is the principal instrument. If you can receive, be healed. Sir, you cannot be sick. Just that word, be healed. You know, there are people, after you say be healed, go, you are healed. They will still, they will still come and say, sir, you have not laid hands. You have not anointed. You know, sometimes as pastors, we wonder, after such a service like this, somebody will still run to the office. I still need a word. The word that was preached was what? <laughs> just a word. Just a word. Ah, from the altar, plenty of words came. You are not looking for just a word. And it's the same person that preached that you are still following. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They have not understood the mystery and the power in the world. That's why. That's why I said from the beginning, every word you truly receive changes your life. So, when he says he sent his word and the word healed them. Now, let's take an example from scripture in Matthew chapter 8 and also Luke chapter 7. It's the same story about the centurion soldier. And Jesus Christ said, oh, let me come and he come to your house since your daughter is sick. What did he say? He said, no, I'm not worthy. Matthew chapter 8, if you read it from verse 5 down to verse 8 and to verse 13. When Jesus entered to Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion besetting him, saying, Lord, my servant lied at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, don't worry as it were. Don't worry, I'm coming when I finish what I'm doing. Hello? When I finish what I'm doing, what happened? I will come and heal him. This was a man who understood the instrument of healing. What did he say? Let's read verse 8 together. Matthew 8, 8, went to go. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But what? Speak the word only. What does this mean? The word only without any other thing can heal you. It, there is enough power in the word of God that can create failed kidney. There is enough power in the word of God that can straighten your spine. There is enough power in the word of God that can create new veins. Remember, it was this same word of God that created everything we are seeing. But we do not understand it that way. Can I tell you the truth? The healing problem in the church is majorly an Africa problem. <laughs> you know why? The, because of our traditional religious belief. We just believe that something must be done spectacular for even for the gods to answer. So consciously or consciously, we carry that mentality to Christianity. So when we just say, you are healed, the African man does not believe that until he falls down. Until I say, oh, how long, how long have you been sick? He said, since 17 years ago. Mm. When did this start? I was eating one day. Something choked my throat. I started coughing. He said, hold it there. 
Your grandmother put something in that food. He said, I said it. Hear me, sir. It, once you just make it somebody or mysterious, the African man will believe. Even when it is a lie. So, when you come to church like this, and we said, as you are going home, come back with testimony. See, can you see? We now said they don't prophesy. So, what is that one? Is it your word? Hello? Is it your word? Mm. They don't see vision. Hear me, church. There is nothing about vision. Vision is scriptural picture about your future. If it's not scriptural picture, it's a lie. Oh, you really understand? Anything that is not in the scripture is not the vision for your life. Any other vision you believe puts you in captivity. But we just want this spectacular. But the centurion soldiers say, Speak the word. What? I prophesy to somebody. The sickness that came here with you is not going on with you in this service. Speak the word. Only. That is no The word only. And my servant shall be healed. Amen. We'll not go on to the other stories. Verse 13. Matthew 8 13. What did the Bible say? Jesus Christ said, Go. Thy servant is here. Can you see how short it is? Go. Thy servant is what? And Jesus said unto the soul to say to you, Go thy way as thou hast what? Believe. So be it done unto thee. And what happened? And his servant was healed. How? In the self same hour. Which means there is enough power in the word of God in Lokoja altar to heal your grandmother in Anyangba instantly. If you can believe it. Speak the word only. So the word of God is the principal instrument for healing. Every other thing is a boosters. So when the light of the word of God breaks forth, when you catch it, when you receive it, you begin to have it. You begin to have it. Why is it so? Why? The word of, why is it that the word of God is the principal instrument for healing? John chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 5. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was what? With God. And the word was what? God. If we understand verse 1, it simply means the word of God is God. Do you agree with me? From this scripture, are you sure? Do you agree that the word of God is God? Incidentally, it's also written in the Quran the same way. The same. The same. The word of God is what? Is God. Now, what does this connote? It means when the word of God goes before you, go and prosper. God has followed you to prosper. Because it is not just the word that was spoken to you, God went with it. To bring it to pass. That's the meaning. Everywhere you see the word of God, please know God is there. Because God and his word are one. Verse 2, please, quickly. Studio John chapter 1, verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God, verse 3. And nothing was created, and, things, and all things were made by him. And without him was what? Not anything made that was made. I like verse 4. This is another reason why the word of God can heal. In him. So, the word of God contains the life of God. So, the word of God is not in quote, permit me to say, like me and your words. No. 
But let me say this. This is important. Your words, as it were, our words, humans, communicate our thoughts and ideas. Make known our thoughts and ideas. Can I tell you something? God's word does not only make known his thoughts and his idea. God's word is his life. Contains his life. <laughs> God's word from verse 4. In him was what? Life. It means the life of God is in the world. What is the life of God? If you read John chapter 6 from verse 48 to verse 58 about the communion, it explains the life of God there. Jesus Christ said, I'm not living by myself. I'm living by the life of God. What was that life of God? He called it what? Eternal life. Everlasting life. A life that cannot be affected with time, with circumstance and conditions. So in the word of God is the life of God that the elemental force of the earth has no power over. So when the word of God goes forward, it subdues elemental forces and superimposes itself on every sickness. That's why the word of God heals. May the Lord give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's, let's, let's narrow it down. Maybe we'll round off from here. What is in the world that heals? What is it about the word of God that has so much power to heal? Please take note. There is power in the world to heal. But what is in this world that have, make it have so much power? <laughs> Number one, in relation to healing, the word of God is medicinal or is medicine or is tablet or drug the word of god is medicinal proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to verse 22 proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to verse 22 my son attend to my word give ears Unto my saying, verse 21, let them not depart from thy eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart. Verse 22, church, can we read together? Verse 22, for they are what life unto those that find them, and what hurts. Remember, still you leave that scripture. Remember, we said something now that the word of God contains the life of God. True of us, from John chapter 1, verse 4. God is saying, if you receive the word of God, you'll find the word of God, you will receive the life contained in the word of God, isn't it? And what is that life that you will receive? It's called eternal life. Can I tell you something? Eternal life is not subject to sickness. So when you receive the word of God, you receive a substance that cannot be sick. Or that even if you are sick, it will kill sickness. Because it contains what? Eternal life. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I tell you why you are sick? You are sick because you carry human life. Human life is subject to malaria. After the fall, man was placed under what he was supposed to be above so man becomes subject so the human life is subject to sickness subject to failure subject to causes subject to everything on the earth subject to the devil subject to affliction but when you receive life from the word of god when you are born again the bible says you carry what eternal life that is why I say the world is eternal life. For they are life to them that what? Find them. It's not life of oxygen and carbon dioxide that you are breathing. No, it's another life. Sir. It is called eternal life. And by eternal life, you are not supposed to be sick. Because eternal life is superior to everything on earth. 
So all you need is eternal life. Can I tell you something? By being born again, you are above sickness. Because you carry the life that is not subject to the devil anymore. So you cannot be sick. The problem is, after salvation, we are still thinking unbelieving. So Satan take advantage. He said, they are what? Hurt to all their flesh. Hurt to all their flesh. What does this connote? It means, ay, 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 ay. permit me to use our natural, maybe for just illustration for, under, for, best, for understanding. You know, if you bring a drug here now, a, a, a medicine, majority of our medicine, maybe it's just white, red, pink, any color, isn't it? But you see it. Hello? Now watch this. If your child sees you taking it because you were sick, watch this, watch this. He didn't know what it is. As far as he is concerned, he only saw you took a white substance that was solid. And this child went to school and saw the teacher holding the same white thing. And it was even bigger than the one the mother had. It's called chalk. Are you hearing me? And one day, the child was feeling the same way you were feeling. And then, went to his bag, caught the piece of chalk, and also swallowed it and took water the same way you took. And then the mother would say, Junior, you are feverish. Have you taken drug? He said, yes. He said, what kind of drug? He said, the one you took. How did you get it? He said, when we were in school, our teacher gave us, so I put it in the bag. Your teacher gave you drug? Say yes. Go and bring it. And the child went to the bag and brought chalk. And the mother said, ah, it's no drug, it's chalk. And he said, mama, what is the difference? You took a white substance. If I grind your own, it becomes a white powder. If I grind my own, it becomes a white powder. How dare you say, I took something different? Now, what would the mother say? The mother will say, no, your own is chalk. My own is what? Church, answer this question. What makes the mother own drugs and the child own chalk? Answer. Most of you don't know. Maybe only the pharmacist. Yes, you believe it. There are chemical substances in the one the mother took, even though they are the same, that initiated the healing of that woman but they are not what in the chalk i have good news for somebody there are spiritual substance in the world there are chemical spiritual substance in the world that when you truly took it when you take it i tell you sir it will cause your recovery hear me sir Pastor Ben may say something, but it doesn't come to pass. Why? Pastor Ben's word may be chalk, but the word of God is not chalk. It's a substance. That word of God contains, you call it chemical. I call it the life of God. The difference between the drug and the chalk is some chemical substance in that white substance that make it a drug. I have good news for you. The difference between a man's world and God's world is that there is divine life that restores life in God's world that may not be in any man's world. So when God speaks, swallow it and take your healing. It's not the same. It looks the same. But it's not the same. So when we say God's word is medicinal, we are simply saying there are chemicals, spiritual chemicals in the word of God that initiate healing. Pastor, can you tell me those chemicals by his stripes is inside the world. Himself took my infirmities. I saw it in, the, in that drug of the woman. The inhabitants of the land shall not say, I'm sick. These are chemicals in the world. That when you keep saying them, and you keep taking them, what happened? Sir, sickness will bow. 
Because they cannot stand the chemical of the world. Is somebody with me? So the word of God is not ordinary. It is what? Medicinal. Somebody said, Pastor. So, this one, I swallowed it. How do I swallow the word of God? Can I tell you something? Believe it and repeat it to yourself 25 times a day when you are sick. Not just by stripes and heal. No, keep saying it. As you are saying it, what you are doing, you are taking more. Fortunately for me and you, no overdose. No side effects. So if I take one pee, the sickness refuses to go. For example, by stripes and heal. The sickness and, and, and so therefore, he took it. He refused to go. The inhabitants of the land shall not say. That is why, hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Those who have checkered word knowledge will always be defeated by the devil any day. Because one word is not enough. You hear the Bible say, keep them in the midst of your heart. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Every day, I cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. Even when your temperature is rising, take the pee. He took it. He took my family. I cannot be sick. What are you doing? You are taking the medicine of the word of God. And what it contains will begin to destroy every sickness. What is in the world? Two, it is surgical. Operation. It can carry out an operation. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is our life. First shepherd that any two edged soul piercing even what? Dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows. And it's a designer of the thoughts. What this scripture is explaining here is that just like Pastor said, was it last week? The ARP said last week. Sickness is not just the absence of disease in your body, sickness is the complete awareness of a man. Spiritually, physically, your soul, and emotionally. is the complete well-being. From what we read in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it covers them all. It talks about piercing into the front of soul and what? Spirit. Soul and what? Spiritual sickness, emotional problems, joints and marrow. Marrow is where your red blood cells are manufactured. So even if you have sick sickle cell anemia the word of god can go to the marrow and recreate complete new cells the word of god does not just affect it affects every part of your body you have a wrong thought always bad thinking bad thinking he said it will design your thoughts what are we saying the word of god is sharper than the sword you use for surgery or the knife, or the blade, whatever you call it. So, if only you can believe it, sir, it can get to any part of your body, including spirit. So, even if it's a spiritual disease, it will get there and cut it away. I hope you know that, that one, that one, when it is spiritual, that one, doctors have no answer. But the world have an answer. To the design of the spirit and soul. Soul and spirit. It can get there. It can rule it out. Sir, so, all you need to do, believe it and keep declaring it. Can I tell you something? Most of us are too psychedelic when it comes to the devil. I've said it three times now. And even the way you say yourself, Satan even knows that you are not serious. I'm here by his strength. Oh God. <laughs> this all this, this headache says, Okay, they say we should say it to I am healed. I am healed. It's like the sons of Skeva in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. Go and look for it by yourself. Let it enter you. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. And the spirit enters. What? Sir, when you are confessing the word or you are engaging the healing instrument of the word, don't just say it. Say it until the spirit enters into you. Say it until what? Say, does it surprise you that when they give you drug in the hospital, in most cases, in most cases, they don't just give you one drug. They give you plenty. 
They can even give you 14. Take one one each day for 14 days. One one each day for 14 days. Can I ask you a question? This is a new week. Take one verse of scripture twice daily for 14 days and come back with your testimony. Rise to your faith. That's a prescription. In the area of your need, search the scripture for in them you know that you have life. Search the scripture. When I'm trying to feel feverish, I, sir, I can never be saved. He took it, I can't have it. I can never, it's constant. It's constant. It's constant. I can't, what am I doing? I'm taking the pee. I don't take three times a day for what? How can I take three times a day? I take one per one hour. Hourly. By stripes I'm here. By, I said, in fact, recently I was feverish. I told God. First John chapter 4, verse 17, as he is. I said, God, it's simply me. You are having running nose now. But because he said, as he is. Do you understand scripture? As he is. And then you are having running nose. What does that mean? He has it. Sir, the running nose disappeared. You know why? Because he cannot have it. Satan collected his property. I prophesied to somebody. Whatever enters this service with you today that is not of God, I command it drop off your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as you partake of the anointing, every yoke of sickness shall be destroyed. As God's servant come to administer the anointing, every yoke, sir, every yoke, sir, shall be destroyed. Every, sir, get ready for total health. Get ready for your total deliverance in this service today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly before God servant will come and bless the anointing and them minister to us. You are here, you are not born again. Healing is the children's bread. Though. It's not everybody's bread. Are you a child of God? Healing belongs to the children of God. I beg you, stop pretending in church. Surrender your life to him. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? Nobody knows that you are going to, going to hell. Why not make a U-turn and say, Lord, I repent. That's the clarion call, call for somebody today. You are in this service. You are not yet born again. You know what it is you are doing. It's unbeliever that do it. It means you are an unbeliever. Don't say, no, I come to church. Coming to church is not the same thing with salvation. It's not the same thing with born again. It's not the same thing with redemption. No! You need to consciously invite Jesus. And that's what I'm doing now, that you should consciously invite Jesus into your life. Maybe you were a believer before. You backslid there. A little of pressure. Like we are too stressed, whatever. But Jesus said, come back. I'm still waiting for you. It's an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You want to give your life to Christ? Or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Put your right hand on your chest where you are standing. Put your right hand on your chest where you are standing. Pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins today. I come before you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. I repent of my sins today to serve you all the days of my life. Because you died for me on the cross. The third day you rose again to justify me. Thank you for saving me right now. In Jesus' name. You pray that prayer. Can I ask you please humbly carry your Bible, your back. Please come forward to the phone. Quickly come forward. You pray that prayer. I surrender.